Good morning, Genesis, and happy May Day. It's the month of May, and we are just looking forward to all that God is going to do in the days and the weeks to come. Of course, we are looking for breakthrough, that God is going to bring breakthrough not only in your life and in my life, but in the life of the church and in the life of this state and the life of this country and just having real breakthroughs spiritually to where we move into places we've never moved in before and we hold behold the glory of God like we've never beheld it before. I just want to remind you again of uh, the gathering we'll have this Sunday morning, 10 a.m. We'll be live streaming on Facebook and we'll be doing as we've done in the weeks past and having uh, our worship team here to, to lead us in worship and I'll bring a message. Uh, wasn't that a great time last Sunday uh, with uh, uh, Brother John and, and uh, the gang that we had? It was just so good, the service, and the Lord tremendously blessed it. And I hope that you're being blessed at home too. So I just want to encourage you this week with uh, to keep pressing in after the Lord Jesus to continue, continue to seek his holy face and desire him uh, as you never have before. Take full advantage of this time that you have uh, whereby you can come in and grow quiet before the Lord, seek his face, spend time with him. Because the Lord is really wanting to speak to you. He's really wanting to communicate to you his will. And he's wanting you and me to really behold him. And it's by beholding him that something gets unlocked inside of us. Have you ever noticed that? That the deeper you go with the Lord and the more you pursue him, how you yourself get set free. And that's because whom the Son sets free is free indeed. And it's it takes Jesus, it takes his light, it takes his truth, it takes him being the way to show us uh, uh, things about ourselves that are locked up in us. And by beholding him, getting to know him, things get unlocked inside of us and we change. I mean, this whole thing of being transformed by the renewing of our mind can never be overemphasized. And what you're putting your thoughts on, what you're putting your mind into, what you're thinking about, what you're meditating upon, what you're seeking, uh, all contributes to the renewing of your mind. And by that, you being transformed. People want to be transformed, but they don't think about the fact that there's a process and it starts with your own head. It starts with your mind and being transformed by the renewing of your mind. And so it takes you being in the Word of God. It takes you meditating on the Word and being in prayer and seeking the Lord, seeking His face, you know, for all of this transformation to come to us because our minds are being renewed while we're in the presence of God. And so this it's something very, 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 very personal. To, to draw close to Jesus and to know him uh, as another person. And I've been thinking about, about our Lord, and, and I've been thinking about him, you know, being a human being. I know he's fully God, but he's also a fully uh, human, and so he's a human being. So he has his own personality. He has emotions and thoughts and desires, and I think about him in, in that way. And, I, and as I've said before, I realize that Jesus, the human being Jesus, is the human being I'm supposed to be. I'm supposed to become like him. And, and yet just beholding him uh, is the most marvelous thing. And by doing that, we are being also transformed, Paul tells us. We go from glory to glory, from glory to glory. So it means we're in the glory, and we have a glory whereby we don't have to veil our faces like Moses had to veil his face. But we, with an unveiled face, can behold him and shine forth his light in the world. And by beholding his glory, we can obtain his glory. And we go from one level of glory to the next. And it's a step-by-step -step process. But I, want to, I really want to, to encourage you to pursue Jesus. There's a lot of things that people pursue in religion, uh, in, in the church, that have nothing to do with the Lord Jesus, or that it's, uh, it, it's, it belongs to the Old Covenant rather than the New Covenant, the Old Testament rather than the New Testament, in the sense that in the New Testament, 
the, the fullness of God's revelation of himself is given. Because Jesus Christ is the fullness of God manifested to you and me. And we know the Father, and the Father is revealed to you and me through Jesus Christ. And, and it's the most marvelous thing that John in his gospel talks about in chapter 1, in verse 18, verse 18, that no one has ever seen God. But then he goes on to speak of Jesus as the only begotten Son of God who has come and has revealed him. Jesus' purpose not only was to come and redeem sinners, redeem me and you through the cross, the shedding of his blood, but his purpose was to come and reveal the Father. And, and this is something that is also our purpose on earth, that we become so full of Jesus that people in beholding Jesus and you and me behold the Father. So when, when Jesus was ministering to the woman caught in adultery, and the Lord has the work through that whole thing with the religious leaders pressing him for an answer and wanting him to condemn her or wanting him to let her off the hook and so that he, they could trap him in some way. You know, he just stooped down. And he just listened to what the Father was telling him or going to tell him to give him an answer so that he could minister to this woman as well as the men who were bringing these charges or this trap against him. But by doing so, the Father is revealed. In loving that woman, not condemning her, telling her to go and sin no more, that's the heart, that's the revelation of the Father. And so everything that we do that is like Jesus is a revelation of the Father. Because God is speaking to you and me today through the language of a son. God speaks to us through a son. And his name is Jesus. I love what the Hebrew writer writes here in chapter 1 of the book of Hebrews. I want to read the first three verses to you. And I'm reading out of the Pan, uh, Passion Translation. Chapter 1 of the book of Hebrews, verse 1. Throughout our history, God has spoken to our ancestors by the prophets in many different ways. The revelation he gave them was only a fragment at a time building one truth upon another. But to us living in these last days, God now speaks to us openly in the language of a son, the appointed heir of everything, for through him God created the panorama of all things and all time. The sun is the dazzling radiance of God's splendor, the exact expression of God's true nature, his mere image. He holds the universe together and expands it by the mighty power of his spoken word. He accomplished for us the complete cleansing of sins and then took his seat on the highest throne at the right hand of the majestic one, at the right hand of God. Did you catch that about how that down through the ages God has spoke to his people, especially the Old Testament, through the prophets. But now God is speaking to you and me through his Son. And everything that God is saying to you and me, and that is going to be God-like, is going to come forth in the image and the radiance, the brilliance of his Son, Jesus Christ, in the language of a Son. God is, speaks to us in the language of a Son. Now, you know, we, we, we think about how that we speak. We speak English, and God speaks in son, <laughs> S-O-N. God speaks in son, and that son is Jesus Christ. Paul tells us that we can speak with the tongues of men and of angels, and yet if we don't have love, we don't have anything. So the thing I want you to understand is how that if we want to really speak for God, then we're going to speak in the language of Son, Jesus Christ. Because Jesus Christ is the full revelation of the Godhead. And Jesus Christ is the one who is the mere image of the invisible God. The God that John says we cannot see in John chapter 1, he says we can see through the Son, the Lord Jesus Christ. 
And I want to encourage you to speak in the language of the Son and to glorify Him. I love the fact that it says here that the Son in verse 3, as the Passion Translation gives it, is the dazzling radiance of God's splendor, the exact expression of what God is like, God's nature, the very mirror image. And, you know, I thought about today uh, bringing a mirror and, and uh, just, you know, showing you that as an illustration, but just, you know, think of a mirror and, and think of the thing as you look into it, you're seeing the exact expression of who you are outwardly. And this is what Jesus is. Jesus is the very expression of the living God. And by reading about him and looking at him, then we can behold God. I love the fact that the promise is that to those who are pure in heart, Jesus said they're blessed and that one day they will see God. I'm looking forward to seeing God in the full expression of the Lord Jesus Christ as he really is seeing him face to face and being with him forever. But I want to encourage you, go back and, and sit down. The Gospel of John's a wonderful place to start. John has one goal, and that is to reveal who Jesus is. And in revealing who Jesus is, to reveal who the Father is. So if you start there in the Gospel of John chapter 1 and you just begin through, it's all about this man, Jesus Christ, who is also God. And it's the most amazing revelation. Matter of fact, John says that Jesus is the only begotten of the Father. And that's a real interesting term, that word begotten, in the Greek language. It's the Greek term monogenes. And monogenes means the only one of his kind. And Jesus Christ is the only one of his kind. And God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, the only one of his kind, so that the world would not perish, but have everlasting life. And so as we behold Jesus, as we look at him, and as we pursue him, then more and more we'll speak in the language of the son, and we'll reflect the image of the son. And this is God's very plan and purpose for you and me. And I want to encourage you in this. Pursue Jesus with all of your heart. Pursue him with all of your mind. Do that by loving him with all of your heart, with all of your soul, with all of your strength, with all of your mind. The Lord is going to reveal himself to you. He's going to unlock things in you to bring forth who you are really supposed to be. May the Lord Jesus wonderfully bless you. God loves you, and so do I.